Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Shivani Hassan, and I'm a transgender woman. I'm also a junior political science and sociology major here at Florida State University, and this is the very first TED Talk that I will be giving in my life. Um, I would like to start off uh, by thanking one of the organizers of this event, Antron Mahoney, uh, for presenting me with this opportunity. Uh, he was my instructor. He runs a great program here at Florida State University. Uh, it's called the Social Justice Living Learning Community, and it's a one-year course that covers you know, basic forms of oppression that occur here in the United States, uh, race, gender, and it covers the transgender issue pretty well. Uh, so if you know any of your freshman friends who are coming here at Florida State University, I encourage you to, to encourage them to apply to the Social Justice Living Learning Community. I think it ought to be like a required class here at Florida State. Um, so I would like to introduce my topic. Uh, it's called Transgender Liberation and Communities of Color. Uh, so what I will be talking to you all about today uh, is really covering the intersectionalities between race and gender. Uh, talking about transgender women of color who have to deal both with the oppression of being a trans woman and somebody that has to deal with the historical oppression faced by ethnic minorities here in the United States. Uh, you'll see here in the first slide, you know, when I saw the picture, it has people of many different colors. And that's to show, you know, that gender isn't the binary that society creates for us. It isn't just women equals pink, men equals blue. There are as many gender identities in the society as there are stars in the sky. Uh, the main issue for transgender liberation is that you should be able to be your authentic self, uh, to express yourself as you wish without judgment from your peers, the government, and society. Um, so up top, you know, you'll see two transgender women there. Uh, the first one is Mrs. Edwards. Uh, she was murdered earlier this year in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, by a man who originally tried to flirt with her, but then was angry when he found out that, he wasn't, that she wasn't the typical woman that society considers. And uh, next to her is Jennifer Laud. She is a Filipino woman that was murdered by a U.S. Marine earlier this, or, or late last year. Uh, we'll be talking more about that case later in the presentation. Uh, so just a little bit of a rundown of what I want to talk to you all about today. Uh, so, you know, really the big beginnings of the transgender struggle. Um, how have transgender people been treated throughout society in the various areas of the globe? Uh, really covering, as I said, you know, the intersectionalities between race and gender. Uh, highlighting key issues faced by the transgender community and giving attention to transgender people of color, as well as talking about some activism and my personal experience. So the early beginnings. Uh, in the Middle East, uh, you know, transgender people were treated like normal, uh, even given uh, highly valued positions. Uh, they were priestesses in various nations within the Middle East. Um, however, as organized religion uh, came more into play um, in the Middle Ages as well, um, they started having more oppression, uh, you know, forcing transgender women to undergo you know, castration to change their genitals you know, in order to be considered a, a woman. Um, in Africa, uh, they were you know, honored as religious deities. Uh, there's a lot of intersex gods and transgender deities in various African cultures. Uh, in fact, the second Egyptian queen uh, was considered to be a transgender man. Uh, so transgender, you know, in Asia, uh, where I'm from in India, uh, they're called hijras. Um, they're somewhat respected in society, but it's a very complicated uh, process. Uh, so, you know, while they're respected in certain aspects, uh, you know, it's a good luck to see them, you know, perform at people's marriages. Uh, they're invited to bless newborn babies. Um, however, they're still cast aside in Indian society. Um, the caste system, you know, just very much a racialized system in India, uh, comparable, you know, to the Jim Crow here in the United States, uh, views transgender women and transgender people as very low on the totem pole. They suffer unemployment as high as 70% in India and various places. Um, they were only recently allowed political rights. Um, only two or three years ago um, were they allowed the right to vote, just like any other Indian citizen. And in 2014, uh, the Indian Supreme Court uh, made a great landmark decision. Uh, they considered hijras as a third gender, uh, which is somewhat an improvement of where it was before. Um, however, they kind of lump all trans people together, whether you're trans man, uh, whether you don't even identify within the gender binary or trans woman, uh, you're still considered a hijra and considered part of, you know, quote unquote, third gender. Um, earlier this year in Mumbai, a transgender woman was able to become the first political seat ever in history. Uh, she won a local seat as mayor, and um, she was like highly an underdog, had very little money, uh, but she was able to win the support of the people and win the very first political office in, the, in India. Um, so here in Western society, um, you know, Native Americans, you know, highly valued transgender people and their culture. Uh, they're called two-spirit. Um, it's a very broad term meant to cover a full umbrella within the LGBTQ spectrum. Uh, they were given high positions um, in the society and treated very well. Um, however, you know, once the colonists from the West, you know, started to come over here to the United States, uh, they were one of the first people to go. Uh, 
the Two-Spirit people were used as an excuse as to why you know, Native Americans were considered savages, uh, because they didn't follow the gender binary that the West and in, in, in Europe um, had created. Um, you know, so they were systematically killed um, and raped and sexually assaulted um, in the genocide that occurred here to Native Americans in the United States. Um, so early developments in transgender studies. Uh, Germany was one of the earliest pioneers um, in gender studies. Uh, they created uh, kind of inst various institutes and research on the issue. Uh, you know, the 1920s, the 1930s was a very interesting time in Germany. Uh, there was various revolutions that were going on in the world. Uh, particularly, many people in Germany were inspired by the Russian Revolution. Uh, so many progressive and left-wing thoughts uh, really took place in Germany. Uh, the 1920s, the 1930s uh, were really considered a social renaissance in Germany. Uh, Havelock Ellis was one of the earliest researchers on the issue. Uh, he created a research book called Sexual Inversion. Uh, it was the first medical exploration on homosexuality and transgender issues. And Dr. Hirschfield, uh, he later created the Institute for Sexual Violence. Uh, it was the first extensive research into transgender clinical and surgical procedures. Uh, the Institute was repressed after the Nazi party took power, and it destroyed the facilities and the research that was created. And basically, homosexuality or anybody that identified within the LGBTQ spectrum uh, was considered illegal under the Nazi regime. So any kind of research and advances that were there were immediately destroyed. Um, so it wasn't until 1949 that Dr. Hirschfeld's dream of having the very first sexual reassignment surgery procedure was fully realized. In 1949, uh, Michael Dillon be became the very first transgender woman to have a sex gender reassignment surgery in London. So basically, you know, in various societies, in order for trans women's existence you know, to be considered as a woman, um, they have to get, you know, as I said, what is called a sexual reassignment surgery. Uh, it's an over $30 operation you know, to change your genitalia and various other parts of your body uh, to meet the typical feminine body within society. Um, so a little bit about my experience. Uh, you know, I'm a transgender, I'm a woman, transgender woman. Uh, you know, I was assigned male at birth by the doctors, but that was never what I identified as. Uh, since I was three or four, you know, I always told my parents that I was a girl, that I wanted to be a woman, but they never really took me seriously. They were like, you can't be somebody else. Like, you are a man. This is what you are. This is how God made you. And, you know, I tried to get help in school. I tried to, you know, talk to counselors, talk to teachers, uh, but none of them took it seriously either. And I lived in Massachusetts. You know, that's supposed to be like a liberal haven. Uh, but, you know, 10 years ago, I couldn't get any help. They all said the same thing, you know, that you're a boy and you have to deal with it. Uh, so for a long time, you know, I didn't know any alternative information. This, I mean, I was only dealt with what I had. Uh, so, you know, I pretended to fulfill the social role for almost 18 years. And it wasn't until I got to college here at Florida State University that I really started exploring and discovering what it meant to be transgender. And it was only six months ago that I fully came out to the world as a transgender woman. Uh, so, you know, currently I'm... <laughs> So currently, I'm looking into what is called as hormone replacement therapy. Uh, so it's kind of a transition before many individuals get their sex reassignment surgery. Uh, so basically, it costs about $2,000 a year. You can either take it in the form of a pill, or you can get it injected by the doctor. And what it does is that it changes the body your, of your shape. It changes the shape of your body to look more feminine. Uh, it enlarges your breasts and also like, reduces the body hair as well. And it really also makes you feel more confident psychologically that you, know, you are who you are. Um, so I'm really hoping to get that soon, and that's, you know, where I'm at right now. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the issues, uh, you know, that transgender people face here in society. Uh, Lambda Legal reported that, you know, 44% of all reported hate crime killings are committed against trans women. And 50% of LGBTQ deaths are also against trans women. And, you know, all transgender people survey, uh, you know, the research that they've done, you know, research on this is very hard uh, because, you know, the existence oftentimes isn't legitimized. Um, so based on the research that they have, you know, 40% of transgender people in the United States have either thought about or committed suicide within the past year. So other issues we face, you know, as a transgender woman is really low life expectancy because uh, we're oftentimes facing some of the highest rates of sexual assault, um, you know, be being murdered, you know, by just the guy that killed, you know, Mrs. Edwards in Louisville. Uh, you know, we have really low life expectancy. According to the Transgender Law Center, um, we have a life expectancy of 35 years. And poverty, especially for male to female transgender people, that is, very, is very high. Uh, there's a high rate of unemployment and employment discrimination that we face. 
our monthly income is lower than the average minimum wage earner. Uh, you know, under the average minimum wage, like even working at McDonald's is about $12,000 a year. Um, but however, we make monthly income that's even lower than $1,000 oftentimes. And you know, as I said, discrimination is very high. Uh, employment discrimination is reported about 57%. I know various employers don't recognize you know, transgender people, and you know, the transgender people as a class are not protected in the society yet as, in, as federal law. Um, so employers can actually fire you for being transgender and legally be allowed to do it in various states. 37% report housing discrimination. You know, it's very hard to even get an apartment you know, when you're applying for your apartments. Uh, you know, the landlord often you know, looks down upon you for being transgender, views you lower, and doesn't give you the housing that you deserve. And 30%, you know, report unstable housing conditions. And only 16 states here in the United States have gender identity discrimination laws. Washington, D.C., New York, and California are one of them. And Florida is nowhere near where it needs to be. Uh, you know, a survey of, you know, safety for transgender women was, you know, done a few months ago. And Florida ranks 35th amongst 50 states. It has one of the lowest scores in the nation. And I wanted to talk a little bit, you know, about the activism that's been done, you know, in light of all this oppression that's been faced throughout society. Uh, you know, the Stonewall riots, uh, you know, it's often talked about as a pioneer for the gay rights movement. But what they don't talk about is that in, the, in that 1969 riot, it was spearheaded by two transgender women of color. The Stonewall riots also was a, was a spearheading for the transgender liberation movement, and that's usually not talked about in society. Um, you know, earlier I talked about Jennifer Laud. Uh, she was a transgender woman in the Philippines. Uh, she was almost done with her transition. She was just three months away in November from getting her sexual reassignment surgery. She was saving up for her surgery by, do, by engaging in sex work and prostitution because that is sometimes the only option that transgender women have to make a living because they're cut out of all their job opportunities. So on her November night, uh, she was you know, assigned to be an escort girl and US Marines were you know, at this bar and it was a U.S. Marine named Pemberton, you know, who had taken a liking to Jennifer Laud and, you know, taken her to a room so they would, you know, do a sexual act for money. And as she was changing, uh, he found out on the mirror that she didn't have the genitalia that he, has, he had associated with the woman. So he immediately freaked out, choked her, got her in a chokehold, took her to the toilet, ducked her head in the toilet, and murdered her. He went to his officers and he immediately admitted that he had killed a he-she, yet today he is not behind bars. The entire nation of the Philippines has risen up against this. There's various transgender groups sparking national outrage. It's even sparked outrage against what is called the U.S. Visiting Forces Agreement, where the United States can station troops in the Philippines for security purposes, uh, which many people in the Philippines consider unjust and are also you know, fighting against that. Because oftentimes, when U.S. military personnel commit a crime, they're not held accountable because they aren't tried by the Filipino government, the Filipino laws. They're cried in a military court in the United States where they're easily forgiven and not held accountable. So her case still continues today. Pemberton has pled not guilty, and the next court case should be coming in a few months, and hopefully he'll be indicted. Um, so, you know, in 2015, uh, many people have been writing articles how, you know, there's a new civil rights movement for the transgender liberation. Uh, you know, many there's been a historic rate of murders that have happened since the beginning of January. There have already been... 12 transgender women that have lost their lives this year, and 11 of them are women of color. Around the world, every 29 hours, a transgender woman is murdered. Several states have now begun adopting discrimination laws against transgender folk in bathrooms. They're trying to make it to where transgender women would have to use men's bathrooms, and transgender men would have to use female bathrooms. Uh, Florida, Texas, Kentucky and Missouri are now the states that have been adopting laws against this policy. Uh, so here in Florida, uh, it's called Florida House Bill 583. Uh, it's been proposed by Representative Artiles. Uh, he's from Miami. He wants to prevent transgender folk from using public facilities that match their gender identity by jail time, fines, and legal lawsuits. And it's already passed two House committees. Uh, so, you know, I am a political activist as well, so I do some work. Uh, I had done some work with the Dream Defenders um, on racial justice issues for the past two years. Uh, but I started a new group recently called Trans Lives Matter. Uh, you know, we're trying to respond to systematic injustice that's going on against trans people all over the nation, and we're trying to change the conditions here in Tallahassee. And we are actively fighting against this bill. We've been to every committee meeting, we've been calling our representatives, and I highly encourage you all to help us out as well. Because if this bill passes, my very ability to function will be destroyed. 
My safety and my livelihood is at risk, and it will be at risk for all transgender people here in the state of Florida. They will no longer be able to use any of the public facilities, public facilities that match their gender identity, whether that's the locker rooms, the bathrooms, and fitting rooms. So thank you all um, for listening to my presentation. As I said, I really highly encourage you all you know, to join the movement, help out with trans liberation here in Tallahassee. Uh, my group is called Trans Lives Matter Tallahassee. I encourage you all to all like that on Facebook right now and pay attention to everything that we're doing. Really, you know, we're gonna be calling con our congressmen and our elected leaders soon, and I would encourage you all you know, to really take the few minutes out of your day within the next few weeks to call in and say no transphobia allowed here in Florida because FSU has taken some steps. You know, there's gender identity protections here at FSU. Luck, so luckily, that's great for me. I can go to the bathroom that I wish to go in. However, if this law passes, that will no longer be the case. So thank you all for listening to me today, and please help me smash transphobia.